is Natasha, your friendly farmer, coming with our week four CSA uh, update. So I am so excited. We've been through four weeks already. That means we're a quarter way through the season. So what you've seen so far is a lot of the spring vegetables and hopefully as we uh, bring on the hot weather, we'll start to see some more of those summer vegetables coming on. Um, a few new things in the box this week. I'm going to take you on a tour. We're very excited to um, be featuring these crazy little curly cues. Um, for those of you who are new to this, this is garlic scapes. And it's the top of the garlic when it goes to seed. And you have to break these off in order for the garlic bulb to form. We actually get our garlic from a lady in Sandwich. Uh, Connie Swenson grows a lot of organic garlic. And so she provides us with these cute little bundles. And these are wonderful to chop up and use like garlic or scallions and anything. You can make a garlic scape pesto. These are the seed heads though. You'll want to cut those off and then just use this like flexible portion here and add them to whatever you might be cooking. So garlic scapes, they are a spring specialty and they're only available from the hard neck varieties of garlic. So very fun little special treat this week. Speaking of special treats, we have broccoli this week and some little sugar snap peas. So we have a little tasting for you. Um, great to throw into stir fry or for a fresh dip plate, especially for the 4th of July this week. Um, it'd be a fun way to uh, feature some of your local foods with your 4th of July. Um, I will say though, the broccoli does cook really quick. So if you do choose to steam it, um, just be sure to watch it closely. Uh, for me, just you know, giving it a quick boil and some hot water, it takes only like maybe two or three minutes to cook at the very top. So you'll see it, see it turn bright green and then you want to take it out. I would also recommend doing a salt water um, wash with your broccoli. Just some cool water and um, maybe a tablespoon of salt. Oh, that's probably a lot for this, but, but just a sprinkle, sprinkle salt in there and that helps to uh, just clean the broccoli and before you go ahead and use it. So broccoli and snap peas, very excited about those. Snap peas, of course, you can eat the entire pea. Um, I really don't grow English peas, which are shelling peas, because I figure you really just, you know, for all that effort, want to eat the whole pea. So they're really sweet and really tender. Um, we've got some radishes this week. We're welcoming this purple variety of radish here. Um, they're really gorgeous, and we'll be having a new crop coming in for our Wednesday box, and this is, uh, the remnants of the last crop. So very excited about those beautiful purple radishes. I just had a potato salad with radishes in it um, and that was really yummy. Uh, roast your radishes, I cannot recommend that enough. Um, all kinds of yummy summer treats, a cucumber salad with some radishes. Um, also use that salsa, um, salsa idea. We have cilantro of course in the box again and you can take and make a radish cilantro salsa um, which is really delicious. So some hot peppers, some cilantro, uh, radishes, a little bit of cucumber, lime juice, um, a little olive oil, salt and pepper. Uh, I'll look up a recipe and include that with the video here. So pair these two together. It's a really lovely combination. Or just take and impress people with your amazing salsa by simply adding cilantro to a jar of regular store-bought salsa and take that to 4th of July. Everybody will rave about it. So wonderful cilantro again. We have a Swiss chard, which is just beautiful, colorful. It's called Bright Light Swiss chard, and it comes in a variety of colors. So you might see um, hot pink or yellow or coral. It's really gorgeous, so all kinds of fun colors. It's almost bigger than I am. How can that be? Swiss chard is amazing. So I'm gonna look up and find a recipe for you that I enjoyed very much. It was a Swiss chard and Swiss cheese um, quiche kind of bread bake, really yummy, a wonderful um, brunch kind of item, especially for the holiday weekend. So I will be posting a copy of that recipe and I really love that. So all things Swiss, Swiss cheese, Swiss chard, um, and it w bakes up into a wonderful little bake. So there's our chard. And if you don't know what to do with it and you're overwhelmed by it, just chop it up, saute with a little bit of garlic um, and hot pepper and just put it in the freezer. You can freeze it just in little baggies and then add it to your soup or anything like that. So any of the greens you might be overwhelmed with, just saute them and add them to something later. You'll be glad in the middle of winter that you did. All right, we've got our friendly beets. Gorgeous beets here. And these um, 
I might have said that they were Shiojia. I opened them up and they are not. They're dark Detroit red, just a very, you know, great heirloom beet variety. They're red all the way through. Um, in the future, you will be seeing some Shiojia, which are the striped beets, but these are just the regular dark Detroit reds. And uh, definitely tell me what you did with the beet tops. I'd love to know what people are doing with those beet tops. So those are some great beets for the weekend. We have a lovely bag of salad. Um, I love how our salads every week just change a little bit depending on the crops and what's coming in. So your bag salad is gonna be a little bit different, the mixture every week. So this one has a couple of new things this week. Um, we have a new crop of dark red Lola Rosa. Just love saying that. It's this beautiful dark leaf and it's just this wonderful rich color and it has a little bit of a tinge of light there on some of them. We have Black Seeded Simpson, which is this light one, and that'll be the last week. This one does not like the hot weather. So that'll be the last week for that one. And then we have this beautiful variegated red oak leaf. It's frilly, and it's got kind of a great marbling of color. And then of course the Mizuna, which adds a lot of loft, and it's frilly. And I think there might even be some arugula and other greens in there too. So lots of flavor. Um, take a salad to your 4th of July function. We love the salad and with this hot weather that we've had this week, 90 degrees, salad is bolting and is going to be um, making its way to the end. So enjoy the salads. So we have a great mixture there. Um, we also have some butter crunch lettuce. So you'll be getting ahead of that. Um, this one is a nice just crispy lettuce. Um, enjoy it in all kinds of different uh, wraps. You can use it. Um, as for BLT, that's going to be my husband's uh, treat. He's, his birthday is this week, so he said, I just want a BLT sandwich. Um, and so we're going to be using that lettuce this week for birthday BLTs. And when I mentioned bolting with this hot weather, the lettuce naturally kind of feels like its life cycle is over, so it starts to go to seed and then it becomes bitter. So um, we are monitoring the lettuce and making sure that we get you stuff that isn't bolting but a lot of it is is heading south quickly so um, it's kind of sad to see it go but that means the hot weather will bring on other crops all right and a very exciting feature is napa cabbage so napa cabbage um, makes the most delicious coleslaw and fourth of july is definitely a great place to do coleslaw my coleslaw secret um, and my husband says i make the best coleslaw in the world is Napa cabbage and then um, there's a jar of uh, Marie's prepared coleslaw dressing in the refrigerator section of the store. I chop up some onion and carrot and a little red pe pepper um, and whatever other veggies you'd want to throw in. I just put that sauce in there and I just chill it down real well. But the Napa cabbage makes the coleslaw really juicy but also very light. And I've had to be convinced to be a coleslaw fan over my life but I've discovered how wonderful um, the more textured uh, cabbages are in coleslaw, so I encourage you to try that. Um, so just a beautiful head of Napa cabbage here. Um, also for those interested in fermented foods, you can also make a great kimchi with this, so maybe that's a fun experiment for the holiday weekend. But we'll have more Napa cabbage coming on. So, all right, that's our box, enjoy. Before I depart, I do have a joke for you, and that is, um, why did the tomato blush? because he saw the salad dressing. <laughs> Have a great holiday weekend, you guys. Enjoy your box. Thanks, Natasha from Frank Rock Organics. Happy cooking.